Uh, good evening, Springs Church. Um, I'm hoping and we're hoping that a uh, little bit of this nice weather that we're experiencing now is uh, giving a little bit of a break from being stuck inside and being quarantined. Um, you know, we thank God that we're starting to see possible signs of things starting to lift, and we're looking forward to finally being together soon. But, but we thank the Lord for the technology that we have to be able to continue connecting, especially in prayer with one another and as a body, even over the internet and the technology that we have. I want to do this, if it's okay. I, I like to open in a quick prayer, and then I like to share something in the email that I actually got this morning that I, I like to talk to you about. Um, but before I do that, why don't we just quickly just lift up this time together to the Lord, and then I'll get into just what I want to share from the email, and that's going to lead us into worship and in the prayer direction of where we're heading tonight. Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. Lord, I thank you for a church um, that desires to pray. Even I woke up today, that scripture, which we all know, the fact that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers in heavenly places. You even just shared with me this morning that what we're dealing with with this virus and what we're dealing with in our economy and what we're dealing with in our churches and what we're dealing with in our families and what we're dealing with in our personal lives can't be fought just through physical means. Um, we can't just think our way out of this. We can't just come up with solutions through our own logic out of this. These have spiritual repercussions. There are spiritual things that we have to tear down through prayer to be able to move forward, Lord God. So God, I just pray, unite us this evening together. Give us an anointing to pray, even though we have to do this through technology. And we ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I received this email from somebody in our church, um, and I haven't asked permission to actually share it. So I hope she, the person's going to be okay with me actually just using some of it. But what they did is they were able to express something so clearly that I think all of us are feeling. And I'm not going to share the whole email. I'm not going to go through all of it. There's just two things that the individual said that I want to just bring out, and then I want to just talk on for a moment. And, and this is what they said. They said, two nights ago, I had a dream. But if you asked me in the dream if I was dreaming or awake, I would have told you that I was awake. It was a very vivid dream. And in the dream, I was praying on the microphone in the sanctuary, just crying out. I was praying, God, I don't know how to pray anymore. I don't know if I'm supposed to rebuke or repent. I don't know if I'm supposed to submit or rebel. I don't know if we're supposed to advance or retreat. I can't discern your movements. I don't know how to fight. And then they went on to write this. This is what they wrote. In the dream, I was crying out from a place of weakness. In the natural, I had many weak days during this pandemic. I swing from times of powerful prayer to rewriting our will. It has been so unsettling, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. My vulnerability in the dream was just confession that I truly don't understand his hand in all of this. I don't know which scriptures to pray. And the prophetic clamor on the internet, etc., is just too confusing to discern. I remember praying one day, Lord, it seems like every man of God has a different prophetic spin. I don't know what to believe. I'm so desperate for your voice. You know, I think that's all of us in this season. There's a lot of confusion about how we pray and how we go about these things. But can I just say this, just briefly. In the scriptures, there's a story in the book of 1 Samuel of the birth of the great prophet Samuel. And the Bible says during that time, Eli and his sons were actually uh, the, pr the priest of the nation of Israel. And, and the scripture says in those days, there was no prophetic vision. There was no prophetic voice. God was not speaking. And because God was not speaking, it was easy to infer that God wasn't doing anything. But we find out later on through the passages of the Bible that God was actually on the move. The scripture says that he found a woman named Hannah and through her barrenness, he caused her to be able to conceive and she brought forth Samuel, which is pretty much one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. And I want to encourage some of us at home, even though we feel like this is a season where we can't find God's voice sometimes, 
We don't know what exactly he's doing. And there's so many people on the internet that have jumped on there that have just spilled their guts thinking this is what the Lord is doing without really waiting on him and praying and allowing him to speak. And it's thrown us into this place of confusion. But I want to say this, even though we don't know exactly what he's doing, and I got to be honest, I don't know. People have asked me, is this the end days? Is this this? Or, or, and I don't know. I said, I don't have a clarity from God. But just because I'm not hearing his voice clearly doesn't mean that he's not doing something, that he's not preparing something, that he's not moving towards something. And what I love is that something that he was preparing, that he was doing, came out of a praying woman. Hannah was spending time just pouring her heart out to God. And God, through those prayers and her pouring out, was able to bring about Samuel, who was going to lead the nation of Israel into a time of prophetic vision and clarity and revival like they have never seen. Some of you home might be saying, well, how do I, what do I do, Pastor Michael? Can I be honest? You spend time in the presence of God and you keep pouring out your heart to him, even when you're confused. And you trust now that God has a plan in this, even though he's not making it clearly known just yet. And when the time comes, he will make it known to all of us. I want you to keep that truth in your heart so we spend some time just in worship now and we go into a time of prayer. Amen. God is doing something. God is leading something. God is birthing something, even though we feel like he's not saying something. And with that trust in him, Let's go to a time of worship. Let's worship before the Lord. I'm going to allow Ryan and Jess just to lead us in. And then let's go to a place of prayer. My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood in righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Mm, seeing Christ alone, the cornerstone, the weak and made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, yeah, He. seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale and my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within
you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we take a few moments now just to consider your faithfulness to each one of us individually and to this house, to this church corporately. Lord, we focus on that faithfulness. We say, we make a declaration even from this song this evening. That God, you're going to do it again. You're going to do it again and again and again. Because your faithfulness isn't just an act of what you do. Your faithfulness is who you are. It is your character. It is your nature to be faithful, God. You can't do anything but be faithful. And Lord, we take that to our hearts now. As we're remembering, as we're contemplating, as we're meditating. And we say, God, you will be faithful again and again and again. And we thank you for that tonight. We thank you, God, that you're going to be faithful to our prayer meeting. We thank you, God, you're going to be faithful to these prayers. We thank you for it. And we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise God. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jess, for leading us in that time of worship. Um, as we go into prayer, we're going to make a quick transition. I'm going to allow uh, Billy, one of our elders here at Springs Church, he's going to be coming in, and, and Josh Gallardo, one of our missionaries who, who's back through this season of the CV-19. Um, they're going to help us actually lead prayer tonight. And I'm so excited for prayer this evening. One of the reasons I'm so excited is because I actually came into the meeting as I got up this morning after some time of prayer myself and time in the Word with no prayer direction whatsoever. It was almost as if God wasn't sharing or opening anything to my heart. And I'm learning more as a pastor when that happens. Many times the reason why it's happening like that is because God is giving the direction maybe to somebody else or he's giving it to us corporately as we begin to talk and pray with one another. So I came in, and I grabbed Billy, and I grabbed Josh. I said, I had no prayer direction. What is God speaking to your heart? What is God saying? What is he speaking in your prayer time? And it was amazing, just through our conversation, um, the things that Billy were bringing out, Josh were bringing out, it was, it was totally coinciding with the email that I got in the morning and what God was sharing out of, about Eli and Hannah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Billy just talk maybe for a moment or two where God was leading him this morning. And then he's going to actually lead us into a time of prayer, and we're going to have our prayer direction for tonight. So I'm going to give him the mic, and then we're going to get into that together. Amen. Well, Springs Church, I had, um, just like Pastor Michael said, a, a word on my heart. And just kind of thinking about what the email said and how it was just confirmed in the word, I just want to share a couple things with us um, and then kick us off in a, a time of prayer. And I'll ask Josh to, to help lead us as well. Um, so if you read in Matthew 11, I'm going to just grab a couple of verses. Uh, verse 1, when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Verse 2, now when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? So we'll just pause there for a minute. Try and just kind of cast your mind back to who John the Baptist was. So from birth, even in the womb, he was testifying to who Jesus was. 
The Bible says that in the womb, he jumped when his pregnant mother was near Mary, who was pregnant with Jesus, and, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, his mom. All throughout his life with his disciples, he would be walking around in the town, and he would stop everything and say, look, there's the Son of God, there's Jesus, there's the Messiah. So all throughout his life and throughout his ministry, everything he did was to reveal Christ to, to Israel. He even said, the only reason I baptized with water was so that Jesus would be revealed as the Christ to Israel. So here he is in prison, and he's now beginning to question that. He's in this place of trying to wait, and, and he wants to see what God's going to do, and surely he's going to come for me. Surely he's got a word for me. And he, he becomes so um, overwhelmed in the waiting that he actually sends a, a message to Jesus, and he says, are you the Messiah or not? And so just imagine that doubt that creeps in and what that can kind of do to you being in isolation. So when we think about being quarantined, we think about not having kind of the normal um, fellowship and community um, it's easy. One of the things the enemy is going to do is he's going to come after our minds. And we don't always have, kind of like Pastor Michael said, we don't have clarity in the direction and exactly what God is doing. Um, but one of the things you have to remember is when we're waiting on God and we're hoping for the impossible, one of the things he asks us to do is reflect back on what he's already done. So if you look back the next verse, he says to John uh, or to his messengers, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers, lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the good news preached to them. Blessed is the one who's not offended by me. So here's the point. We, we definitely have faith to hope for the impossible. We pray for healing. Um, we continue to pray for God to stop the spread of the coronavirus. We look for him to give revelation about what he's doing in this time. Um, but you also have to remember part of faith is anchoring ourselves back to the evidence he's already given us. So what I mean is celebrate the things he's already done. Reflect back to the things we can be thankful for that God has already given us. And that gives you that staying power while we're waiting. It gives you that place of faith to hope for the impossible. Um, one of the things we have to guard against is getting online and running around to hear these different conspiracies. One blog to the next, one video chat to the next. Everybody's got an idea of what they think is happening. And some of us have even fallen victim to this of saying, well, you know, maybe the government did this and this is all a farce. I would encourage you let that stuff go and just be content to wait on God and celebrate what he's already done for us. Sometimes the conspiracies give us a sense of control as we're trying to answer questions in that gap of what we can't know. And, and it's us not really wanting to surrender our fears to God. So I just want to encourage us. Um, I, I won't go on for too much longer. I just want to encourage us as best as you can, guard your heart against those conspiracies, against what the enemy is going to tell you that causes you to doubt who Christ is. We learn about him in the waiting and there's something he's doing in our character um, during this quarantine. Um, so I'm just going to kind of open us up in prayer, and then I'll, I'll give it to Josh, uh, and we'll continue the night. Well, Father God, I, I thank you, as the song said, for your faithfulness, Lord. Um, often we look for answers, and we want facts, and we want to know figures, and we want to know why. And what you give us is actually truth. And, and that's what we need to guide our hearts, God. We don't need facts. We don't have to have all the answers, but we need truth. And you are unchanging and so, God, we thank you for what you've already done in our body. We've, we've heard um, testimonies of healings and breakthroughs and um, great reports coming out of our fasting time and, and new ministries and connect groups coming around. And, and even though we're, we're separated, you've continued to bless us financially in our giving. God, we have so many things that we can be thankful for. Yeah. So, God, I pray that you would cause us to anchor our faith to those things. Let that be the witness to our hearts, God, that we don't have to search for answers in this time. We, we want to see you change um, the direction, and, and we want to see healings, and we continue to believe for those things, God, and we hope for the impossible, because we know you're above all of this, Lord, but in the waiting, cause us to be faithful, to remember that you are doing work, and even if we can't see it, even if we don't understand it fully, you are the hope that we wait for, God. It's, it's not just a, a, a breaking down of the virus. Yes, we want that, God, but ultimately, there's a revelation of Christ in the waiting that we're looking for. So, Father God, would you continue to speak to our hearts through your word, would you cause us to remember the testimonies and the evidences of the things you've already done, Father God? Would you bless us in our, our prayer times, God? Let our minds be rinsed in this word. Let our, our times of prayer, God, just stir us into greater faith. Um, so, Lord, that we can, we can wait on you faithfully and we, don't, we, don't, we can rejoice right where we are, God. Even John the Baptist struggled with these things. He even questioned, are you the Messiah? After decades of giving his life to you and a ministry of baptism and leading his disciples to you, God, and even he began to struggle with this, Father. So I ask that you would meet with us right where we are, God. I pray you bring conviction to the things we look at online, the, the places that we go to find answers. God, let us come back to the source of truth. 
Because what you reveal to us in the word is not an answer, but a person. So Jesus, I, I just pray that we would be anchored in you. I thank you so much for what you're doing in our church. Continue, God, to give fruit from this. Continue, Lord, to stir us up. Continue to cause us to be thoughtful about you and not fearful, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, I thank you that there's not a Bible verse that says that we have to have all of the answers, but rather that the scriptures point us to to leaning into the one that has the answers, God, that it is enough, God, to be in relationship with the God that in the book of Colossians says that you sustain everything by the integrity of your word, God, that you are keeping the earth in orbit, Lord. You are keeping our hearts beating, breath in our lungs, God, and we need to be thankful and mindful of your control. Even when we feel out of control, Lord, let us lean into the one that is in perfect control and Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, uh, that you have given us everything that we need uh, as it pertains to a life and godliness, even in this season. That means that we have everything that we need, God, that we don't need to be scrambling, trying to figure out the answers, because we know that there is a God on the throne who never has a jaw-dropping moment, that is never scrambling out of control, trying to fix things, that you are in perfect control, Lord. And I pray that there would be such a sweet serenity that would come over our our assembly, our church, God, as we wait on you, God, as we are mindful of the things that you have done. And in our mindfulness, we gain confidence, Lord, that you have the answers and that you're going to be a perfect provider. You are going to be perfectly faithful because it is your nature, God. We thank you and we praise you. We we are honestly gratitude. We have gratefulness in our hearts uh, concerning who you are, that you're never going to leave us stranded, God, but that you have all of the answers. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, church, as we just close this time of prayer, this first segment together, would you do me a favor? I know this technology makes it awkward and it makes it tough sometimes to pray along, but would you pray through a scripture with me? One scripture to kind of close this segment of prayer up. And I want to read it, Romans chapter 5, and I'm going to go down to verse 3. Paul says this, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. You know, sometimes I wonder in the season, as God is not giving a clear vision to the church, he's not giving clear direction just yet, if what he's doing is he's trying to build our perseverance which in turn is building our character. Then listen to this. The Bible says, and as that character builds, we begin to explode with hope that we could get to the other side of this with a hope that's pouring out of the church. Can I be honest to an economy that might be struggling for quite some time or to a world that might be thrown off its axis for a little while, but the church, because we persevered, the church, because we waited on God, even though it was confusing. The church, who continued in prayer, comes out of this time with hope that's flooding out of their hearts. That becomes the answer to so many that are searching for something in this season. They're searching for something to lay hold to. It becomes, listen to this, even their salvation. Amen. So we can, can we just pray for grace over our congregation to persevere. That God would give us strength to persevere right now so that we would build up our character and in building up our character, we will be overflowing with hope. Father, we pray for that right now for our congregation. We pray that for our children. We pray that for our youth. We pray that for our young adults. We pray that for our singles. We pray that for our married. We pray for the elder, Lord God, and the elderly. Lord, we pray for our whole congregation together. Would you give us grace to persevere now? Would you give us grace when we don't have all the answers and we're looking ahead to the future and we said, okay, God, this has been 40-something days. We expected an answer by now. We expected clarity. We expected vision. And for many of us, we're sitting and we're saying, I still don't know what next week holds. I still don't know what next month holds. I still don't know what the rest of 2020 holds. But God, would you give us perseverance to be able to wait God, will you pour upon us by your spirit? We can't do this in the natural. We can't do this through our own flesh. We need the spirit of God. And
and through our union with Christ to give us the grace to wait like John the Baptist. To say, okay, I'm isolated and I don't understand everything that's going on, but I'm going to be reminded of his faithfulness and I'm going to wait in prayer. I'm going to cry out like Hannah. I'm going to keep pouring out my heart until the answer finally comes. Because in this season, he's building my character. And in building my character, he's unleashing a hope in me that I don't even see yet. But it's going to come out when God wants it to come out. Just like Samuel arrived to the nation of Israel when God wanted him to arrive. Lord, we ask for this grace now. And we commit it to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So again, this is something Billy just brought from his prayer time with the Lord. This email confirmed it, the things God was laying. Isn't it amazing how God works through a body? How he confirms through a body together. But I also want to continue to pray, and I'm going to give uh, Josh the mic, because he had a little prayer direction this morning as well. And we're going to pray together as he gives that prayer direction, and then we'll engage our hearts again in prayer. Continue with us. Don't get weary now. Let's engage our hearts. Let's engage our faith. Amen. Well, Springs Church, something that the Lord has just been stirring on my heart in the past couple days as I've uh, just been talking to some of the students in our church, and I just know that this is a very difficult time uh, for everyone, but uh, maybe especially in certain aspects, uh, our students, uh, middle school students, high school students, even those that have had to return early from colleges, and uh, I've just been talking with some of them and knowing that they were looking forward to prom, or they were looking forward to being able to do this aspect of their program, and that it's been canceled now, and the the strain of having to do their education through uh, an online platform, and I know it's been very difficult, um, and so I, I absolutely have empathy and, and just want to be praying for them, uh, but also because I know that as we are all gathered together as a family, I thank God for the opportunity that we get to be uh, spending quality time as a family, but also that that can be difficult sometimes, uh, days without end of seeing the same people and missing your friends and when wanting to go out but not being able to. And so uh, it's just been, the Lord's just been stirring on my heart to pray for a grace that would settle into our families, that there'd be a sweetness in our fellowship, that there would be um, even a patience, a forbearing with one another, and uh, that we would be uh, life-giving with our words. And so I just want to pray, especially for our young people, but also that uh, and, and Billy and Pastor Michael helped me pray for this, just a grace for our family units as well. So let's just lift it up to the Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, that you delight in using young people for your glory. Jesus, you selected young men as your disciples. You uh, have, throughout the scriptures, called people like Samuel and Jeremiah, God, youth, God, to extol you, to tell the nations of your character, God. And I know it is your intention now, Lord, to raise up a generation in this dark and perverse time that we live in, God, to raise up a standard, God. And I pray for the youth, God, of our church, of our city, of our nation, God. I pray for the middle schoolers, the high schoolers, the college students, God. Lord, would you draw them to yourself as never before, God. Lord, when the enemy would say that, oh, you should give yourself to these things, Lord, would you raise up a generation that is sold out on fire for the person of Jesus Christ. God, I know, Lord, that there is disappointment, God. God, that there is uh, crushed expectations of not being able to see friends or finish their, their college program or, or be able to go to prom, these different things, God. I pray, Lord, that you would give them something superior, God. You would give them something better, Lord, as they fellowship with you, as they glean something from your word, Lord, that they would come into contact with the one true living God, and that would be transformative. It would mark them for the rest of their lives, God, that you would use this season in such a particular way to fascinate them to the person of Jesus. Lord, I want to lift up families in these times, God. Lord, there's that old adage that familiarity breeds contempt. God, I say not so for Springs Church, Lord. I pray that you would give such a grace in the homes, God, that, Lord, brothers and sisters, parents would be able to live together in harmony, God, and that there would be a true drawing together, God, that there would be a bond, 
Lord, that would stand the test of time, that would weather this storm. Jesus, Lord, I pray where there's frustrations, God, or arguments, God, grace upon grace, Lord, grace upon grace, Lord, would you pour out your love, would you pour out your spirit and families, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God, and I just want to agree uh, with that prayer, Father God, and, and I just want to thank you um, that even in these times that, that seem confusing, God, that you still have a revelation for families, yes. and um, and just like Josh was praying, God, it, it's very easy to, to be cooped up with your family or spouse or yeah. roommates or, or whatever, God, and, and all of a sudden everybody's flaws start coming out, and it's more difficult um, and where you expected to find unity because we have this extra time, God, so we pray specifically for grace in those relationships, yes. Lord. Yes. Um, and we do want to lift up the youth to you, God. We, we thank you that we have numerous examples in Scripture of you calling the youth and plucking them and specifically using them for your purposes, God. Even David was out doing something that seemed kind of meaningless, out caring for his father's flocks, and you sent the prophet to come and pull him out, oh God, and you used him in mighty ways. Same thing for Samuel, God. He was coming out of his sleep and jumping up and saying, who's calling my name? He had a heart for the things of God. So I pray that for our youth, Lord God, that there would be a sensitivity to your spirit and to your word that, Father God, they would hunger after you and that all of the temptations and the different things that that try to woo them and pull them away, God, that you give them a sense of conviction and a courage to trust in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for families. We lift them up to you, God. The stresses and all the little annoyances, the different things that cause us to bicker, uh, that make us irritable, God, they're just distractions that keep us from prayer, Father God. So give us grace. Give us grace to be humble and to show mercy to one another. And, Father, God, to continue in the place of prayer, continue in the place of of devotion and and unity in our households, dear God. We thank you, Lord. Let's pray just one more minute and just agree with me on this. It seems like there's been a very large attack on our young people in this city when it comes to suicide. We've dealt with that over the last couple years. and We've had incidences even in our own church family. But let's just pray in this season that God's protection will be over young people and over our army bases as well and over the families there. But let's just ask that God would just cover us again against this. Father, we commit this to you. To be honest, many of us don't know how to fight and we're looking for clarity how to pray. And one of my prayers, God, is that you would teach us how to pray against the spirit of suicide. You would show us what needs to take place. If there's a place of repentance that has to happen, if there's a place of deep confession that has to happen, if there's a place, Lord God, where there's a scripture that we have to stand on, God, and and we're praying, even though we don't have that clarity, you would show us, and in this meantime, through showing us, you would cover over our young people. You would cover over our young adults. You would cover over our singles that seem to suffer from this, Lord God. And Lord, you'd protect them in this time. Let your grace and your mercy keep them safe in this season of quarantine, that the enemy couldn't use this to bring harm upon them, we pray. And we commit it to you now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to have the worship team just come back. And, and I'm going to let them sing another song of worship. We're going to engage in worship. But you're at home right now, and you've heard some of the prayer requests that we've prayed so far. This idea of God giving his grace to persevere and to wait on him. Uh, this idea of covering our families with a grace to bring unity instead of division. Um, even against the spirit of suicide in our city during this season. And what I want you to do is as we're worshiping. I want you just to pick maybe one or two of those topics, and I want you to pray out right where you're at before the Lord. I want you, let's mingle our worship right now with the prayers of where we're at, and let's bring it before God, worship and prayer, and let's just lay it before the Lord's feet. So I want you to engage right now. Pick something out from those prayer requests, and for the next five minutes, I want you to pray. And if you don't know how to pray, and you have the spiritual gift of praying in tongues, Feel free just to sit there and to pray out in that angelic language between you and God. Amen? Ryan and Jess, would you lead us in one more song, and then we'll close. When peace like a So oh. 
as we close now I just have one more thing I'd like to pray God just put it on my heart in the prayer meeting so we're just spending time in prayer and in worship together it's this last prayer request tonight I'm asking you just to engage yourself one more time in this but let's pray that there be a genuine move of God that's going to come out of this CV19 situation I know you might be saying well what does that mean I got to be honest I don't know fully but let's ask that there would be a great move of God whether that means a revival um, part of that might be that God would restore intimacy to his church again, that he would build prayer meetings all through our nation again in our churches, um, that even pastors that might have been far from the Lord that are shepherding the sheep might be convicted and turn to a place of seeking after God's face, um, that our family members would be, get saved, I mean, touched by the Lord through this. But let's just ask that when we come out of this, and I believe this with all my heart. God has something he really wants to do. He's planning. He's preparing. Let's pray into that so that it comes to a place of real fruition. And even if we don't know the full extent of all what that is just yet, let's begin to pray and say, God, we trust your leading. We trust where you're going. But bring it about as you would see fit. So let's just engage one more time. Just bow your heads right where you're at. If you could pray in the Spirit, start praying in the Spirit right where you're at. Get the mind of God together. And then engage our faith. Father, we lift this up to you as we close. That God, there would be a great move through your spirit on this earth, in our nation, in our church, God. Through this CV-19 situation, Lord Jesus. That you would not just bring us out on the other side just saying, well, we got through it. Because the Bible doesn't say you just bring us out on the other side getting through things. No, no, no. The Bible says we come out more than conquerors. You said you don't come out just victorious. You come out with spoils. You come out with a move of God when I bring you through something. So, God, we ask for a move. Like in the days of Eli, you were preparing Samuel. And even though people didn't know what was going on, you found a woman who was praying and pouring her heart out to you. And through those prayers, you brought a move. You brought a move that lasted for generations. God, we ask for a move across this nation. We ask for a move across our churches. God, that you'd bring people back to intimacy. You'd bring the church back to intimacy. You'd bring them back to their union with Christ through prayer, Lord God. You would raise up prayer services through this, Lord God. This wouldn't just be a shock and just a phase for people. No. They would continue in a place of prayer and congregational prayer with one another. You'd raise up evangelists out of this, God. Many who would go to the streets when this quarantine lifts. You'd raise up open hearts in our nation through this, God. Many who would be willing to listen to the message of the gospel, even though they weren't willing before, Lord God. God, we ask that there would be a genuine move of God that we'd be able to look back at 
and say that was something very special in our generation that came out of that time. As, as, even though we were confused because we sat there in the presence of God. We travailed in the presence of God. We prayed. We continued in our post in the presence of God. And out of that, God unleashed something for his glory and for his namesake. Lord, we ask for this in our families, throughout our city, in our nation, Lord God, and throughout the world. We commit this to you now, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, Springs Church, I just want to say, first off, thank you for being faithful to tune into these prayer meetings, and even through the awkwardness of technology, engaging our faith in prayer. Like I said, this is how we're going to come into what God has for us. This is how we win the battle. It's through prayer. It's through a place of intercession. And you've been faithful there. And I want to say thank you. It doesn't go unnoticed. And I want to encourage you. Uh, um, I know this month we don't know where we're going to be at as a church just yet. We're calling the health department. Pastor Dave's been on the phone. Still can't get any call back just yet. Um, but as we go forward... Um, let's continue just giving grace and glory to God. Let's continue believing the Lord. And soon enough, we'll be back together in our sanctuary and in our fellowship and our community groups. Um, we love you. We miss you. Uh, Beth and I are literally chomping at the bit to have fellowship again. We're just in a place saying we just need the body. We need the body around us. But we trust God in the season that he's doing something in the midst. Um, we'll see you again Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. The Lord's put a word on my heart that I'm kind of working through right now. And I know he's going to be speaking to us again. Otherwise, have a wonderful week. If you need anything, you can always email us at our deacons at karen at springs.church. If you have a request, if you need prayer, if you need pastoral counsel, just email her and she'll get it to the right place. Or if you're having a tough time finding some type of connection and you need some type of connection in this season, right on the front page of our website, you can hit the connect button. And we have Zoom meetings happening in our men's ministry, our women's ministry, and our community groups. You can connect even through the internet and you can get on one of those Zoom meetings and get some fellowship for yourself as well. We love you guys. Be blessed. We'll see you this Sunday and again next week. And very soon, we will see each other in person. Thank God. <laughs> guys, have a great week. Be blessed.